Good day, grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. In this lesson, we're actually going to start learning about the photoelectric effect. Now, I know this is a revision lesson for you, so I'm not too stressed about it. So first of all, let's talk about the definition. What I mean is I'm not stressed about it, as in that it's going to make it a lot easier for me to teach you, knowing that you've already been introduced to it a little bit. Okay, so the photoelectric effect is a process whereby an electron is emitted by a substance when light shines on it, okay? So examples of the photoelectric effect are, most of you have calculated with little solar panels on them. You know, there's four little screens, corners at the top, I mean, silvery things at the top, and the fact that you don't have to add batteries to it, that's actually a solar panel, and solar panels use a photoelectric effect. Okay, so that's a typical example of a photoelectric effect being used. So what is happening in what we're gonna discuss in this lesson is that the photoelectric occur effect occurs when an electron is emitted by a substance, usually, well it's a metal, when um, a light shines on it. But this only happens with specific metals um, and it also only happens when specific light is shone on the different metals and we're going to discuss that some more. So let's talk about, let's go through this little demonstration. So what you have here is you have electrons sitting on the surface. So light will shine onto those electrons and the electrons are going to be emitted. Now the question that they're asking here is do you think the amplitude or the frequency affects how the electrons are emitted? In other words, which of those two, the amplitude or the frequency. Now remember, frequency is the amount of energy and amplitude is the brightness. So when we look at this little part of the video, we can, oh, sorry, let me just start again. Light, if we think of light as a wave, light can be broken up, obviously like light we see, we can break it up into amplitude, okay? And the brighter, the bigger the amplitude, the brighter the light, okay? So intensity, determines the light is determined by the light's amplitude the brighter the light the higher the amplitude or the higher the amplitude of the wave the brighter the light color as we know is determined by the light's frequency okay the light's frequency so therefore if you look over here you can see that we've got red and then we've got orange, yellow, green, blue, and then we've got indigo, violet, and then obviously we've got ultraviolet. So you can see that the closer you get to ultraviolet, the higher the frequency of the wave, okay? So blue is medium. So we can say, we know that frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. And so it is pretty obvious, therefore, that when we have, remember the wavelength is from one peak to one peak, one trough to one trough. It's actually between two points that are um, in phase. So therefore, the higher the frequency, the smaller the wavelength, and the smaller the frequency, the bigger the wavelength. Okay, right. So now let's look at the question was again, Remember what the question was. The question was, um, which affects the release of electrons um, more amplitude or frequency, okay? So what I've got here, and which you guys can all go look at if you want to, this is, um, the website is PHET, if it's FET, PHET, and it is the University of Colorado have come up with this amazing website with a whole bunch of simulations of different types of things. And one of their beautiful simulations is this, the photoelectric effect. And what you've got here is you've got your light source, okay? You have got your one electrode, and there is the current that would flow through the electrode. Here is your second, I mean, from the electrode, here is your second electrode. And on here, you can see that this is a piece of metal, this gray bit here is a piece of metal. At the moment, it's sodium. We can change it to zinc or to copper 
or to platinum or to calcium, okay? But in this case, let's just leave it as sodium. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so now what we are going to be doing is we are going to be pl make playing with the the frequency of the light and we're going to be playing with the intensity. Now we obviously need to shine the light with some intensity. Okay, right? And let's just take it all the way down and let's reset. So we're starting at a very low frequency, 770 nanometers, and I'm starting with uh, a 50% intensity. Okay, so not too bright. Okay, now let's have a look what happens. If my in, if my frequency is very low, so we're looking at infrared, yeah, 770 nanometers, I'm now going to increase my frequency. This, yeah, the nanometers is a wavelength, and we know that frequency, I wonder if I can write on this, let's just try, oh, no, I couldn't. Okay, we know that frequency is proportional to one over the wavelength. So what we're saying is that the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, okay? So do you see that we are, I've got a medium-sized medium intensity, it's just in the middle, 51%, I don't know when I moved. And now we're at 650 nanometers. We're now moving through to, let's just change it again, to 488 nanometers. So it's that light blue color. And you can see that we've got electrons flowing. If I move it a little bit more towards the green, Let's see if we still have electrons going. Yes, we do. Okay. And let's go more to the green, yellowy green. And no, we don't. So somewhere over here is we've got our threshold frequency. We've got the frequency that's required to emit electrons. So what has happened is, is you can see that you need to have a minimum frequency in order to have electrons be emitted. Okay, all the way along here, even though the intensity was at 50%, we weren't getting any electrons being emitted. In other words, I could go back to the orange and wait, okay, and I could make my intensity, which is the brightness, all the way up to 100%, and nothing is happening. So guys, in other words, if these were the lights, the size of the light that shine on Table Mountain, okay, and the brightness of them, and this was a piece of sodium, and the light frequency was at 500, well, no, the light frequency was the yellowy-orange color, then would match the yellow-orange color, then no electrons would be emitted from our sodium, okay? So the intensity doesn't affect the electrons being emitted. You can't shine a really bright light on it and then hope electrons get emitted. You have to get the matching frequency. So let's go back to 50%. More or less 50%. Okay, close enough. And let's go back to our greeny color. And you can see that our electrons are now starting to be emitted. Okay, now let's see what happens if I increase my frequency. So now I'm above the minimum frequency and I'm now going to increase my frequency. Right, do you see that the electrons have got a lot, generally on the whole, have got a lot more energy. They're traveling much faster. Okay, they're traveling much faster. But if we go back to here, you can see that they're traveling slowly and there are much fewer of them being emitted. Okay, let's see what happens if we change the intensity. So if we change the intensity, that's the brightness, and I'm pulling it up. What happens? Let's see what happens to the intensity now. Oh, that's a zero. Let's try again. Let's go up to 100. Okay, so let's go up to the intensity is now 100. Okay. Do you see that the electrons aren't necessarily traveling faster? Let me prove it to you, okay? Yeah, there seem to be more of them, definitely more. Okay, let's go back to 50%. Okay, and I wonder if we can stop it somehow. No, okay. Um, so, yeah, we've got it. Can you see the number of electrons being transferred, okay? Now, if I take the intensity up to 100%, I'm sorry, I need to cough just in a second. Sorry, 
you can see that there are lots more electrons being emitted, but they're traveling at the same speed. Okay, I can prove it to you by now increasing the frequencies. There we go, up the frequency. Do, 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 do. And look how much faster they're traveling. Look how much faster they're traveling on the whole. Okay. There's still some remnants that are traveling really slowly from the previous one, but the rest are traveling really fast. Okay, so what have we learned from that? We have learned that, okay, shining light onto a charge plate can cause electrons to be ejected, but only light of a sufficiently high frequency can eject electrons, okay, from this. And this minimum frequency is called the threshold frequency. So there's a minimum frequency that we need to meet before electrons are admitted, which we saw. Increasing the intensity causes more electrons to be ejected. And increasing the light will cause them to have greater kinetic energy. Increasing the frequency causes them to have greater kinetic energy. So increasing the intensity causes more electrons to be ejected per second. Okay, so let's explain this. There are two ways you can explain this. And the photoelectric is is effect is special. And they love asking this great tools. They love saying, what does the photoelectric effect show about the nature of light? And what they want you to tell you, want to want you to say is it shows the dual nature of light, the dual nature of light. Okay, why? Because what you're doing is you'll look at it using Planck's contribution where he thinks that light is acting as a particle. Then we're going to look at it with respect to Einstein's theory, which is that light acts as a wave and then they're going to combine these two theories. So therefore light, strangely enough, acts as both a wave and as a particle, okay, depending on the circumstances. So Max Planck said, vibrating particles radiate energy, okay, and this energy is not continuous but is emitted in small packages called quanta, okay. So what he was saying is that light is coming in um, little packages called quanta, okay, and they are vibrating at the same time. And the quantity of energy in each package is directly proportional to the frequency of the vibration. So he came up with this theory, E is equal to HF, okay, where F was Planck's constant, okay, E is equal to HF. Well, actually, this was Planck's, Planck's theory. E is equal to H, E is proportional to the frequency, or E is equal to HF, where H is Planck's constant. Now, Einstein said that energies need to remove an electron from the metal. For any metal, a minimum amount of energy is called the work function is needed, and we use W for that, capital W. The metal absorbs the energy of the radiation from one photon or quantum at a time, and the energy of the photon must be equal to or greater than the work function before electrons will be ejected. You need to understand that this year, this Planck's constant was H was Planck's constant, but Einstein actually got his Nobel Prize for relating the energy of light to the frequency at which it was given off. He didn't, funny enough, get it for E equals mc squared. Everybody knows E equals mc squared, and they think of that as Einstein's equation. Yes, it is Einstein's equation, but that's not what he got the, for, got the Nobel Prize for, for science for. Okay. Right, so let's read this again. Energy is needed to remove an electron from the metal. For any metal, a small a minimum amount of energy called a work function is needed, okay? The metal absorbs the energy of the radiation from one photon. A photon is a particle of light or quantum at a time. The energy of the photon must be equal to or greater than the work function before the electrons will be ejected. Okay, so let's just go through a couple of definitions and under things that we need to understand. Photon is an energy package of packet of visible light. Okay, energy package or packet of visible light. A cutoff frequency is the minimum frequency. We call it the threshold frequency. The threshold 
frequency. The threshold frequency is the minimum frequency required of the incident light, of the light that's shining on it, for to be able to remove an electron from the surface of metal. The work function is the minimum energy required to bring an electron to the surface of the metal. Okay, so we know that E is equal to HF, right? And E is energy. If you've got the work function, this is equal to HF0, where F0 is the threshold frequency. So work function is equal to Planck's constant times by the threshold frequency. The intensity of the light determines how many electrons are ejected per second. And obviously, if the frequency is too low, there will be no electrons ejected, even with an increase in intensity, we've covered that. So now, the work function, like I said, is equal to H, which is Planck's constant, times by the threshold frequency. Okay, now, I don't know what happened here. E is equal to WO plus K max. Okay, sorry, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so what we're saying is that the energy of the photon is equal to the work function plus the kinetic energy, okay? Because if there's if the energy of the photon just matches the work function, then there's no kinetic energy. And what will happen is that the electron will just hover above the surface of the metal. Okay, it won't move anywhere. Okay. Unfortunately, that simulation I showed you wasn't sensitive enough to be able to show you that. Okay. So therefore we can say the energy of the photon is equal to the work function plus the kinetic energy and the maximum kinetic energy the particle will have. So that can be rewritten as HF, which is the energy of the photon, plus HF0, which is work function, plus a half mv squared. And that is the equation that is on the formula sheet and that which you need to be able to use. Okay, so now we're going to do a couple of exam paper questions. Because um, I think that's always the best way to really understand what's going on. Okay. So what happens is, is ultraviolet light is incident on a photocell, okay, with the potassium cathode as shown below. So what happens is the light shines on the plate. If the incident light has a high enough frequency, it causes electrons to be ejected, they go through here and through here, and then complete the circuit and go back to here. Okay, you understand, and then it starts all over again, all continues. It says the threshold frequency for potassium, which is F0, is 5,548 times by 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay, first it says define the term threshold frequency. The threshold frequency is the minimum frequency required by the incident light in order to eject electrons from the metal. Okay, now it says the maximum speed, the V, the maximum speed of the ejected photoelectron is 5,33 times by 10 to the 5 meters per second. Okay, it says calculate the wavelength of the ultraviolet light used. Okay, so let's think about this. We have HF is equal to HF0 plus a half mv squared. Okay, we've been given the V. We've been given the FO. H is a constant and so is the form, the mass. Okay, I mean the, yeah, the mass. So H is a constant and the mass is a constant. So what we need to do is now have a look at the, so we've got, and we want this threshold frequency because in order to get the wavelength, we need the frequency, not the threshold frequency, the frequency of the incident light. So we go max is, I mean, Planck's constant, which is H, which is 6.63 times by 10 to the negative 34, Okay, times by the frequency is equal to, again, 6.63 times by 10 to the negative 34 
multiplied by the threshold frequency, which is 5,548 times by 10 to the 14, plus a half multiplied by the mass of an electron, which is 9.11 times by 10 to the negative 31, it's on your formula sheets, times by the velocity 5,33 times by 10 to the 5, or squared, all squared. Okay, so let's work out the right hand side on the calculator. And there's my calculator over there. Okay, so let's clear this. And let's work this out on the right hand side. So we're going 6.63 exponent negative 34 multiplied by 5.548 exponent 14 multiplied by bracket 0.5 times 9.11 exponent negative 31 and then I'm going to multiply it again by bracket because I'm going to have to square this so it becomes 5.33 exponent 5 bracket squared and then bracket equals Okay, so all of that equals 4.75984466 times the 10 to the minus 38. Okay, right. Now, normally I would write it down and I'd round it off, but we know that frequency times by Max Planck's constant is equal to all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this, this, by Planck's constant. So I'm going to divide it by 6.63 exponent negative 34 and I end up with a frequency of 0, 0, 0, 0, it's 4 noughts 7 2 okay so the frequency is 0, 0, 0, 0, 7 2 hertz but what did they want they didn't want the frequency they wanted the wavelength the wavelength so now we know that C is equal to frequency times wavelength. Therefore, wavelength is going to be the speed of light, 3 times by 10 to the 8, divided by this frequency of 0, 0, 0, 0, 72. I think I've done something wrong. Let me just work that out again. Hang on, let me just work this out again. Okay, let's do this bit first. So we've got 5.33 exponent 5 equals, then we square it equals, then we multiply it by 9.11 exponent negative 31 equals, and we multiply that by 0 0.5 equals, and we add bracket, 6.633 exponent negative 34 multiplied by 5.548 exponent 14 close bracket equals hmm that looks like a different number here now let's divide that by 6.63 exponent negative 34. Much better, much better. Okay, <laughs> sorry, your frequency is really not supposed to be that small. It's supposed to be a high frequency, okay, especially if it's ultraviolet. So this becomes 7.5 times by 10 to the 14. So that's 7,5 times by 10 to the 14, and that's 7,5 times 10 to the 14. Much better. I don't know why I'm doing that when I can erase, but anyway. Right, so guys, please always make sure that your answers make sense, okay? So now that we've got that, let's work out what our wavelength is going to be. So the wavelength is going to be 3 exponent 8 because C is the speed of light, which is 3 times by 10 to the 8, divided by 7.5, no, let's try again, 7.5 exponent 14 
equals. So that is 200, let's see if we can get that into it. Mm. Yeah, okay. Nought comma one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is equal to four times by 10 to the negative seven meters. Okay, and I'm just wondering if I can show you how, to, well, it won't matter because it's on different calculators, so it doesn't matter if I show you how to do it or not. So that is how long the wavelength is because they wanted the wavelength as four times by 10 to the negative seven meters. Right, that's actually a very nice question. Okay, now it says, the photocell is now replaced with another photocell, but this time it's got a rubidium cathode. The maximum speed of the ejected photoelectron is 6.1 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so the new velocity is 6,1 times by 10 to the 5. So do you agree this velocity is faster? It's much better, bigger. Okay, right. So now it says... I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Skype had a nervous breakdown. Okay, right. So do you agree that this velocity is bigger than that one? And 6.1 is obviously bigger than 5.33. And that's all we have to compare because this is 10 to the 5 and that's 10 to the 5 as well. So definitely this kinetic energy is more. Okay, it's higher, right? If the kinetic energy is higher, what does that mean? It means that less energy was used for the work function. Therefore, the work function of the rubidium has to be smaller than that for potassium because more of this energy of the photon was transmitted to its kinetic energy, to its velocity. Okay. Right, let's look at another question. It says, when electromagnetic radiation shines on metals, electrons may be emitted. The maximum kinetic energy of emitted electrons is plotted against the radiation frequency for three metals. So this is K max versus the threat radiation frequency. Okay, now let's just think about this. What is the formula? It's E is equal to work function plus a half mv squared, which is the same as saying HF is equal to work function plus a half mv squared. And what have they done? They've plotted the frequency against this, the kinetic energy. They've plotted the frequency against the kinetic energy. Okay? The frequency against the kinetic energy. So what have they said? They said the maximum kinetic energy of the metal is plotted against the radiation frequency for three metals. We've got calcium, which is this one. We've got aluminium, which is this one, and beryllium, which is this one, okay? Now it says, <clears throat> name the phenomena described above. Okay, well, it's obviously the photoelectric effect. Then it says, define in words the term cut frequency. That is the minimum frequency required for electrons to be admitted from a metal. 
Um, now it says determine the cutoff frequency for beryllium. Okay, do you agree that if this is the maximum kinetic energy, if there is no kinetic energy, if I cross this kinetic energy out, okay, do you agree that the frequency is just going to equal to the work function? Okay, and the work function is made of HF0. So then we'd have HF equaling HF0. These are constants. So we'd have the frequency is equal to the threshold frequency. In other words, what I'm trying to say is this frequency here, that there, that dude there is the threshold frequency because of the fact that at that point there is no kinetic energy. So the correct answer for this is 1 comma 2 and then you've got to be careful you have to read the units so it's times by 10 to the 15 hertz that is the threshold frequency for beryllium okay now it says what physical quantity does the gradients of these graphs represent hmm what physical quantity does the gradient of these graphs represent? Okay, so let's think about this again. Okay, do you agree y is equal to mx plus c? That is your equation for your straight line. Okay, that's your straight line. On the y, they've put the kinetic energy. So this is kinetic energy. And then they've gone on the x, they've put the frequency plus c. Okay, so do you agree that what they've done is they've rearranged this so that the kinetic energy is on, okay, so let me just help you a little bit, okay, just to help understand this a bit better. Do you agree that normally we have HF is equal to WO plus <clears throat> kinetic energy, EK, right? That's our equation. But now if we make EK the subject of the formula, do you agree EK is going to be equal to HF minus W0, <clears throat> right? Okay, so therefore, if I had to rewrite this in this form, it would be EK is equal to HF minus W0. So since we've plotted the EK versus the frequency, H is your gradient. So therefore, the quantity, the physical quantity that the gradients represent is Planck's constant, Planck's constant. Okay, Planck's constant, and that is H, and that is why, that is why they are all constant and they're all the same. Okay, you will get the same gradient for everything. Okay, they are parallel to each other. Now it says, what is the minimum energy of the incident light must have in order to emit electrons from the surface of the calcium metal? So now they want to know for calcium, what is the minimum energy, energy, not frequency, energy. So the minimum energy is the work function, which equals HF0. So we've got Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times by 10 to negative 34. Now we need to multiply it by this threshold frequency. Okay, so if we look at it, this is 0 0.6 and that's 0 0.8. So if we look at it carefully, that's 0 0.6264, no, that's 0 0.7. That's 0 0.7 over there, that's 0 0.7. So therefore, this is, I mean, that exactly there is 0 0.7. So that's 0 0.7. Hmm, that there in the middle is 0 0.7. So that's about 0 0.6, 3, 6, 6, 6, 9, 7. Oh, hang on. There's an easy way to do this. That's one, two, three, four, five blocks. Five blocks equals, so it's four. So therefore, this is 0 0.68. Okay, so that's going to be 0, 0.68 times by 10 to the 15 hertz. Okay, so let's get out our calculator. And it's 6.63 exponent negative 34 multiplied by 0 0.68 exponent 15 equals 4.5 times 
4.51 times 10 to the minus 19. So that's 4,51 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Please remember the joules. So that's 4,51 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, now, what is the question? The question is, when electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 187 nanometers shines on one of the metals indicated in the graph, the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons is... Oh, sorry, I need to cough. I'm so sorry. Just a second. second. So sorry. It says, when electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 187 nanometers shines on one of the metals indicated in the graph, the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons is found to be 4 times by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Use the relevant calculations to identify the metal. Okay, so let's erase all this. I've written down all the information we have so far that we need. Okay, so they've told us the wavelength, but we don't want the wavelength, we want the frequency. Do you agree? Because our well, graph is the kinetic energy versus frequency. So what we need to do is use the wave equation, which states that C is equal to lambda F in order to find the frequency. So it says electromagnetic radiation of wavelength 187 nanometers. So the wavelength is given as 187 nanometers. So grade 12s, this is why it's important that you know that N stands for nanometers and more important that you know that it stands for 187 times by 10 to minus 9 meters. And most of my students find it quite easy to remember because of this nano 9, nano 9, okay? The pico giga, not so much, okay, but nano 9 works, okay? So we've got the wavelength. C is the speed of light. So that's just 3 times by 10 to the... Eight. So do you agree that we can get the frequency of the incident, the incident frequency, okay, by working out frequency is equal to C over lambda, which is going to be 3 times by 10 to the 8 over 187 times by 10 to the negative 9. So let's get out the calculator. Okay. So we've got 3 exponent 8 divided by 187 exponent negative 9 equals 1.6 times 10 to the 15. So therefore the frequency of this light, the frequency of the instant of light is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the 15, 1 comma 6 times 10 to the 15 hertz. Okay, so that's the frequency. The frequency of the incident light is 1.6. But what did they ask? They asked, we're looking at which metal. So we know that HF is equal to HF0 plus the kinetic energy, okay, EK. They have told us that the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons is 4 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules. 4 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules, okay? So we know that this is 4 times by 10 to the negative 19 joules, right? We want to work out the metal. And the only way we can work out the metal is to find the threshold frequency. We know Planck's constant, 6.63 times by 10 to the negative 34. We can work out this energy. It's again going to be Planck's constant, 6.63 times by 10 to the negative 4, multiplied by the frequency. And then we can work out the threshold frequency and we can identify which metal. So, grade 12, we will continue with this question tomorrow. Have a great day.